Hi everyone, welcome to my course. My name is Tina Lee, the Interculture Trainer and Lecturer. Today we are going to examine the term of culture. Before we start, I'd like to share a story with you. The, the two young fish swimming along, they happen to meet an older fish. The older fish nods at them and says, Hey boys, how is the water? One of the young fish looks over at the other and asks, What's the water? What message do you get from this story? The immediate point of this story is that the most ubiquitous, important, obvious realities are the ones the hardest for us to see or talk about. So is culture. Culture is the water we swim in. It surrounds and defines us. So what do we mean by culture? What is culture? Many people use culture to describe refinement and some employ it to mean art. In this course, we use the anthropological approach. It's about how we think and act. It's surely a formidable task to define culture. As you can see, there are already quite a few definitions on the slide. When we think about culture in this direction, keywords such as beliefs, values and norms are coming to our mind. It is important to know the differences between those crucial terms. According to scholar Schwartz, values refers to what's important to us in life. Everyone holds numerous values but with different degrees of importance. In your value system, you may put achievement value over the hedonism value. Beliefs are the ideas about how true things are. For instance, people may have a strong belief that war never solves problems, or doctors are wise. It's really about the subjective probability. What are norms? Norms refer to the rules for appropriate behavior within your group. For example, we shouldn't talk while eating. But our value affects whether we accept or reject particular norms. There are different classifications of culture, such as national culture, sexual culture, gender culture, age culture, professional culture, class culture, organizational culture. It's important to bear in mind that cooperational culture can transcend national traits, such as joint venture with a shared vision can succeed despite the national differences. In this course, we we'll mainly focus on national culture. According to Professor Gerhard Hofstede, culture is the collective programming of the mind that distinguishes the members of one group of category of people from others. So what is the collective programming of the mind? For example, in a highly individualistic culture, the values of individualism and the free enterprise encouraged by the society. In contrast, the interdependent behavior in highly collective cultures are nurtured in the society. As you may already know, culture is learned. It's learned through socialization process. We learn accepted behaviors, patterns of thinking from people around us, our families, friends, schoolmates, and of course, media. This culture conditioning is most powerful in the first 10 to 12 years of life. Normally, we only realize our own values are not universal when we are exposed to foreign culture settings. Our filtered perception are one of the biggest hurdles in the process of intercultural communication. For example, punctuality may be highly valued in one culture. And in the same time, in the other culture, it might be associated with inflexibility. As you can see, some behaviors can be interpreted differently by people from different culture. 
What you see now is the pyramid of human uniqueness. It explains how we belong to a certain group, still at the same time unique. The bottom part is human nature, which is inherited, regardless of our origins. We all need to eat, sleep, and survive. We all have ability to feel hunger, grief, happiness, and the need to communicate with others. The second part is culture, which is learned, as we mentioned before. Our culture decides how we express our needs. For instance, in the emotional culture, people have no problem in expressing their anger in public. However, for people in a neutral culture, expressing anger in public is considered as inappropriate. The top of the pyramid it is personality. That explains why every individual is unique. Our personality is a combination of genes and our personal experiences which makes us unique. Now we are reaching to the last part of this video. Six main factors to generate and maintain cultural differences. Let's have a look at the first one, history. We often say that you have to know what people have been through to understand what they want and what they don't want. History is part of culture's collective memory. People in the countries which experience wars, terrorist attacks or economic depression find those historical events uh, influencing them significantly. Such, uh, such feelings are transmitted across generations and form the shared uh, knowledge that guides the culture's collective actions. The second one is ecology. What is ecology in this context? It refers to the external environment in which the culture lives, such as the overall climate, the changing weather patterns, the prevailing land and water formations and so on. Ecological condition can surely affect a culture's formation. It's quite interesting to note that people in warm climate tend to have high levels of involvement and closer physical distances in communication compared with people in cooler climates. Technology, such as media. Media is the one special form of technology which has a major influence on cultures. Media technologies influence people's perceptions about other culture. Media-generated stereotypes have important consequences for the process and outcomes of inter-culture communication. Because of time limitation, I won't be able to go through the rest of the factors one by one, but if you're interested, you can conduct your own research. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Before we finish, I'd like to share an anecdote with you. When I came to Europe to study years ago, one of the most frequently asked questions was if I knew how to perform Chinese martial arts. Some people assume that every Chinese should know how to perform Chinese martial arts. So in this short video, we've covered quite a bit. We talked about the different classifications of culture, especially national culture. At the same time, we examined the pyramid of human uniqueness. Last but not least, we also went through the six main factors to generate and maintain culture differences. In our next video, we're going to talk about communication. Thank you for joining me and looking forward to seeing you next time.